you. Or now. Now, can't you? It's Stigmata from the Calling of the Just CD. The song is called Intro, All of Nothing. Singer Bob Riley. His words kick it off. CD is still available if you still buy CDs. Revelation Records and Huntington Beach. I know it because I'm supposed to send them to they're sitting in the trunk of my car. Hey, buddy, Anyway, Riley is going to kick it off. Upstate New York resident. He's going to say the words and sum it up in a nutshell. This is. Yes. This goes through my head about eight times a day. Every day. Usually in traffic. I'm on my way back to nowhere, but I could not see so clear. I'm taking a real good look at you. I'm taking a real good look at your face. You're being paid back and for always nothing. All right, all right, all right, my friend. I can listen to that forever. Okay, so now we're going to do some sort of transitional thing. Because the headset works better, right? Wait, wait, wait for it. Uh, I don't hear anything yet coming through the headphones. Let's see if it'll do it by itself. <clears throat> Automatically. You have to excuse my hoarseness. Uh, it's not going to do shit automatically. Much like life. Live, live, baby. It's not, it's not even seeing the headset. How do you like that? There we go. That works. I'm guessing you can hear me better now. Um, I'm covered in paint. I've been painting. Uh, well, actually, I've been huffing paint fumes. <laughs> I, you know, it was the first half an hour of pretty vigorous painting. Uh, yeah, like maybe I should open a window. I thought that they said that these things were low VOC. But since I have no freaking idea, volatile organic compounds, I just made that up. I'm guessing. I'm a pretty intuitive cat that way. Anyway, welcome to Knuckle Up. I'm your short time host, Eugene S. Robinson, with the S standing for Savage. And uh, uh, we're here to discuss largely uh, uh, 216. But before I get into that, I got to I gotta thank, I got I, I got to go to the mailbag. And the mailbag is, uh, if you follow at, at Eugene S. on Twitter, uh, one of you's bought me this. It's a great book. It's about how Hitler learned everything and the Nazis learned everything that they, that they figured out from, uh, well, you know, the, <laughs> they figured it out from the Americans, largely. The, specifically, the race laws and the eugenics movement, as well as the money from Henry Ford, and so on. America leads the way. <laughs> uh, yeah, because it was illegal for me to hold truck with white women back in the 1920s in America. So, uh, uh, you know, I I'll just read the beginning to you. 
Hitler's American model is a breathtaking excavation of America's shameful contribution to Hitler's genocidal policies. This book is a profound testament to what the past can teach us about the present. It's more timely than Whitman could possibly have imagined when he began this remarkable excursion to our nation's original sin and its surprising European legacy. I mean, <clears throat> also, if you read the passage of A.H. to San Cristobal, uh, it, it's written as a as a fictional uh, thing where the Mossad actually gets a hold of Hitler in the jungles of uh, 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 Argentina and takes him back. But uh, the Mossad loses the last second of the communique, which is don't talk to him. And he starts to make a case. He's like, you know, I learned all this thing about the chosen people from you. <laughs> Ah, deflect, deflect, deflect. And now since my house is in a complete uproar because of the painting and shit, well, I, I, it's finished now. It's clean up. We're going to put some furniture back in. But I'm getting books. This is another book. See, you got Nazis in the first 30 seconds. And I guess I'm thinking about it. It's a good book as well. I'm thinking about it because of the fact simply that Facebook, uh, uh, one of you did that great illustration of me. I think it's still up on Instagram of me dressed as the Fuhrer. Uh, uh, and you actually Photoshop darkened hands and you put my head on, on uh, uh, Hitler's body. And I, I put it up on uh, uh, Facebook and Facebook left it up a couple of days, but then they got uh, got to me. And the, the, they're not so good at distinguishing deep, dark, biting irony and pro-race speech or pro-racist speech or whatever. I don't, I don't know. So they took it down. So I got Nazis on the brain, Nazis on the brain. And moreover, um, I, I'm not stopping right now. I'm not, don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, I interviewed this cat, A.C. Thompson, and he's doing a piece for ProPublica on, on hate. Oh, no, nah, that, that, that hair looks all right, right? They're like freaking carrot top. Um, and, and, you know, I've been poo-pooing uh, this, uh, the neo-Nazi Charlottesville guys tiki torch carriers, J. Crew wearing. I've been kind of dismissing them. You've heard me dismiss them. I go, you know what? I, I, a skinhead with a hammer back in the 1980s held much more. And, and I'm just going to give you a brief bit because I'm writing a piece about this guy, A.C. Thompson, who is, uh, uh, at, uh, got a whole bunch of cops busted from the Katrina thing. Cops that were like robbing banks and shooting civilians and so on, out of control kind of uh, stuff. He went to Afghanistan. He is like what an investigative journalist is supposed to be. I got a piece coming up on him in Aussie. Uh, uh, but he was saying, I'm telling him my same thing. I said, man, you were there in the 80s. You know, you guys, unless the guys got Doc Martens and a hammer or a hatchet, I'm not really worried. You know, he's like, ah, well, you should be. And I was like, well, why is that? He goes, well, you should be for the very specific reason that, um, that these guys are functional. I go, well, I'm sorry, I'm not get. You know, yeah, the skinheads had their moment, and they, you know, with Bob Hike, they all went up to Idaho and the Pacific Northwest, and then they, you know, the new homeland. They might beat you up on the street, but they're not functional. And I go, what do you mean? He goes, they're not getting jobs. You know, their job is whatever they do. You know, they're sidelined. I mean, I know they usually trade journal. Giant guy installs cable. Former bash boy in San Francisco. Another one's an electrician. The plumbers. You know, independent stuff that they can do. They come into your house. Guys got short hair. You know, at this point in time, you don't think anything of it. These other cats are, are he goes, to a person, almost all college graduates, which means that they're going to be part of the workforce, in the workforce. And uh, they represent a, a serious threat from the fact that if you're not concerned, you specifically, Eugenia, could not concerned about getting beaten up on the streets because, you know, you're you and you're packing chewing gum, the cigarette lighters, and you're not concerned, you know, this is the kind of thing that might concern you because these people are, you know, middle management, upper management. They have a possibility to disrupt in a much more significant way. And this is not even touching the numbers that, that, that are in the, uh, in the arm, in the, in the, in the police forces. And I was like, oh, okay, you know what? I, I, I was back to worrying about airplanes and, and, poison mushrooms and faulty toaster wires. Now you got to add, now I got to, I got to actually worry about these cats with the tiki torches. And he said, they're young too. So it's not like 22 year old college grad in 10 years is probably going to be somebody's middle manager somewhere. And, and they have a predilection for, 
for her, for her racist ideology. It's not going to help you. So, uh, Ten years, buddy, I'm, I'm living on Ibiza with Conor McGregor, with a big, giant, cutout-sized uh, cardboard cartoon head of Conor McGregor dancing in a nightclub. You know, there's a guy who's been in jail for the last year in, in Dubai, which people get confused for Ibiza. It's like Ibiza of the Middle East. That should tell you all you need to know. And as he was walking to his table, you know how sometimes if, you, know, you got some drinks and you, you're drinking one hand and you don't want somebody to bump into you, you know, so you're kind of trying to scoop through a crowd. You kind of scoot and you kind of tap somebody on the shoulder a little bit or, you know, hand on the waist. He puts his hands on this guy's waist. He's got a drink in his left hand, his right hand on this guy's waist. Excuse me. He's drinking, that in the mind of his own business, gets back to his hotel. The police are waiting for him. You sexually assaulted this man. And they arrested him and put him in jail for homosexual activity. Guy's been in jail. He's a British citizen. He's been in jail for like 12 months in Dubai. And they're like, what? Why to get out? Fuck you. So Dubai is very, even though I get some music producer try to lure me to Dubai to write an article on my great studio. Dubai is not the Ibiza of the Middle East. Watch your P's and Q's. That's some straight up bullshit. Anyway. Let's get to UFC 216. Now that I have I have squandered 11 minutes on on Nazi talk and so forth. Um a first a few ground rules. You know the Dr Pepper thing? The Dr Pepper thing. I'm a pepper, you're a pepper, we're a pepper, she's a pepper. What would you like to be a pepper too? Okay, I'm going to adapt that for for MMA. I'm a degenerate, you're a degenerate. We are some degenerates. They could be degenerates. She's a degenerate. We're a fight degenerate to once we've established that the only reason we're here is because of our degeneracy. And those of you who were uh, back and forth with me last night in the Twitterverse, you got you got it bad. You got it bad. And, and if I'm your sponsor, you got it even worse because I'm not helping. Hey, man, I got some stuff in the car. Hey, we can watch it. We can we can stream it on the car. I, I'm not helping. So by which I, by which I mean, our whole sport is 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 in a lost battalion. Entire sport. But I start to think of something. How are we going to complain about MMA being in a lost battalion if MMA in the lost battalion is precisely where we wanted it to be to begin with? It's like Br'er Rabbit. Oh, please don't throw me in the in the briar patch and the fox and the bear throw him in the briar patch. He's like, fuck, I was born in the briar patch. You do realize when UFC one happened, how many people did you know if you were around back then who were interested? I tell you, as a sideline, Oxbow got to play with Maynard from Tool's side project, Perfect Circle. But because it's an Oxbow universe, there was a catch. And the catch was, well, Perfect Circle doesn't feel like they have enough, they don't have enough songs to headline, so they want you to headline. Jesus Christ, you know what that's like? That's like David Bowie coming back from the dead and go, you know, I've been dead a little bit. I'm kind of rusty. Why don't you guys headline? No, what the fuck is this? You mean play last? Nobody's coming for us. So we said, cool, because that was back in the days when we'd say yes to anything, including playing some you know, overweight uh, hippies uh, 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 living room uh, in Krefeld, Germany for 50 Deutschmarks. Uh, so let me, uh, there's a point that I'm making with this. So we, uh, Perfect Circle plays, 600 people there. And we said, well, let's do the changeover quick. We'll keep there, some of the audience, you know. And so we make the change over pretty quick and people start to stay they go, oh, shit, maybe, maybe this is Tool. Tool is coming to play. And they say, and we come out, it's Oxbow and we start to play. And people are like, what the fuck? No. And if you've never had 300 people leave your show at the same time, you haven't lived. Maybe through, and in the end, there were about 200 people there which was a good night for us in San Francisco. Not the 6,000 we get in Paris, but the 200 we get in San Francisco on a good night, we felt great, okay? By which I mean, we're always, how is it that we got caught up in this talk of sausages and plates when none of our interest in this sport will be rewarded by sausages or plates? It will not be. And yet we got bitten. 
we got we we somehow made some sort of connection between the health of the sport, sausages, plates, and our well-being. Oh, well, maybe it's like a you know it's like a, a junkie, like any other junkie. We know if the drug dealer is doing well, the quality of our supply will stay high, and we'll as will we. But before we got addicted, when we were still in our right minds, we didn't give a shit about the looky lose, about the growth deltas, about the people who might wander in. We didn't care. Where you going, Ma says. I'm going to watch this thing where guys are fighting and they can do any kind of martial art they want. Ma, yeah, yeah, yeah. You weren't trying to get your Ma to watch or your friends and your boss. You weren't proselytizing. No, you were a Jew. By which I mean Judaism has a no proselytizing uh, clause. Don't try to push it on you. Don't try to get you. Not trying to start a worldwide caliphate. In fact, we'll actively discourage you by saying, is your mother Jewish? Well, you're not Jewish. Okay. Well, what all you want to convert? You, you know what you know, you know what it's like to convert? It's like trying to get your green card in America. The, av the average person who has their green card in America or who gets citizenship in America knows way more about America than a the average American. And that's what it's like to convert to Judaism. They make it tough. So in the early days, we were all Jews. We didn't care if our, our girlfriend, our boyfriend, our boss, our sisters, our mothers, our friends. We didn't give a shit if they liked it. We liked it. And that was enough. But then we got drunk with, with, with plates and sausages and talk of plate and sausages. And we started to think, man, this, this really matters to us. Well, it starts to matter because it starts to matter to the fighters. When in actual fact, the guys who, who, who built it, the tank abbots, the Dan Severins, you know, the, the, uh, the I don't want to say that. I, a lot of these guys, I got beef with these the guy, early stage guys, which I don't want to dredge up. So whoever the other guys. These guys, Don Fry, these guys were not concerned, especially about sausages or plates. Randy Couture was part of that second generation, third generation crowd. They just wanted to do it. And that was pretty high quality talent. And then like in that season of uh, Saturday Night Live in 80 under Gene Dumanian, where they had nobody before Eddie Murphy asserted himself, there was that period. And there was like, ah, oh, MMA is going to die. It was a flash in the pan. HBO was getting, uh, the, the, all the boxing people were coming down. It, it, John McCain was calling it human cockfighting. Fertitas bought it, and they gave it a year. And they gave it two years. And they gave it three years. And then you started to get bona fide st stars, people who were still not attracted to either plates or sausages. They just want to do it. And then something happened. They started making money. And we got our attention diverted. And we started to say, hey, the more people who watch this, maybe we can hold our heads high. Maybe it's not this weird thing we do on Saturday night. We could people say, man, look at all the Brazilian Jews. How can you waste your time with that strip mall karate? Don't you know that the paradigm has shifted? And where we have been, you are now in? Welcome to our world. Let us show you around. Yeah. yeah, that's what it was. It's a little bit of an ego bite, you know. I discovered this way back. In actual fact, eyes on the prize, you know. Yeah, it's nice for people to get paid. And if people are not getting paid, you know, the guys who weren't getting paid, they were the ones who built it. By which I mean the entire sport is in the Lost Battalion, but the Lost Battalion is where we want to be in the first place which actually means I'm back to being bullish on MMA. Not because of anything I saw at UFC 216, zero. Not because of any of that. And the bald one is still around fucking things up. But just as a general rule, as I'm sitting around in, in, the, in a wine bar last night watching, you know, with like three other people, and I'm thinking, oh man, it's dying, it's dying. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's dying for who? I don't, I don't give a shit about the growth deltas. The casual fan base gives a fuck about those guys. Well, I care about me and everybody else who's on Twitter who's paying attention. Were you entertained? Well, sort of. Thing is, we're addicts. You know, Tango and Cash was the kind of heroin in New York City in the 80s that was killing people. We're, we're, we're down for that. 
ride or die, we're going to be there. But we could feel better about our addiction versus worse. So while the entire sport is lost battalion, and I'm okay with that, which means I'm kind of bullish on MMA, the reality of it is I don't want to see subpar talent. That much I'm okay with. That much I'm okay. I'm okay with being spoiled. All right. Because it wasn't until McNuggets and Tony Ferguson, as far as I'm concerned, didn't win shit. He was my pick to win. He won. I hated the guy, but then he came out with the McNuggets thing, and I was like, huh. That's good. That you, you know a nickname is good when you know nobody will ever know him as anything else other than McNuggets. <laughs> yeah, now McNuggets. <laughs> McG, Mystic Mac, whatever, with his $135 million, with his $135 million, he could do whatever he wants. He could have an event, he could cancel an event, he could do this, he could do that, he could do whatever he wants. That's destabilizing to the sport because apparently what he wants to do is dance at, in a, spasmodically in a Ibiza with a full size cutout mask of Conor McGregor on Conor McGregor's face. Uh huh. You know, so Tony Ferguson is calling him out. Hey, you know, McNuggets come. It's like, what? 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 Tony, who? Ferg Fergie? Oh, yeah, I love her work with, with Will I Am. That shit's all right. Give me my cutout back. D -d -d -d. You know how incredibly high you have to be to be dancing on a table in Ibiza with a giant cutout of your head on your head? Man, I'm envious. I am envious. Just, I, I the possibility of being in Spain and being that high. Just sign me up. Where's Eugene? I don't know. Last time I saw him, he had a huge giant cut out of his head on his head. <laughs> That's what 135 million dollars would do to you. So if you were working at this as a as an MMA equation, at this point. The X factor is, is McNuggets. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what he does. He's not saving the sport at, at all. The fight doesn't fight. He doesn't give a shit. It will be hard to. It will, it will be, I mean, if you were suddenly in a position of having all of your life's dreams in your bank account, what the fuck would you do? You know, you don't have any framework that helps you make sense of life. If you were to win a lottery for 135 million, those those stories are routinely sad. Typically, I met one guy who was a success story, and he's the one who told me it's not anecdotal. He won a lottery. I say, hey, when was it? And it's funny. Like the only two people I know who have had that kind of recall. And I mean, guys who are in happy marriages don't even have this recall. When were you married? Ah, shit. I've guys who have murdered people usually know the exact day and time. And this guy knew. That he had won the lottery and they have reunions and they go to vegas and have these reunions and he goes e each year the stories get sadder and sadder and more and more sad so 135 million, so mcnuggets is a non-factor so in other words if our energy was about accruing sausages on plates for the bald one by getting the growth delta folks the casual fans in it's not going to happen so now it's just us it's us degenerates and as it's us degenerates you know, we could just kind of, we're kind of base this shit on merit, merit alone. On merit alone. That's it. I mean, and, and when I talk about the it factor, I'm talking about the ability to pierce the consciousness of the growth delta folks, the casual fans, or non fans. You know, there are people now who know McNuggets who don't even know anything, they have never seen him fight. I mean, they know he's a fighter. Maybe he's he's a boxer or something. Yeah. But so he's gone. Johnny Boney Joni, That's a, that's a long play. Finally, you know they we have friends at newspapers. They might like a story like that. Finally, it's starting to happen. I saw a couple pieces about is Usada good for MMA? And you know, watching these fights, I'm like, oh. Like, if you're watching my Twitter feed, like, oh, Borg is 
having problems with acne, it seems. <laughs> That's strange. Mm. Problems with acne. Mm. At the age of 25. Well, maybe it's just the weight gain, his immune system, and he's from mat mat stuff. Yeah, whatever, man. I, I, I mean, if you know testing is random and aggressive, and you're still taking a chance, that's got to tell you something. Between a rock and a hard place here, you got a promotion. Cat's not going to stop using, just going to take a chance, and they get caught. You got yourself essentially the Tour de France. And you, and you know what the problem with that is? The problem with that is the touts won't take it. By by which I mean sports book. I'm not, man, lots of money is changing hands over this stuff. You know, I used to kick a bucket of water at the top of a, a top of a driveway. Kick a bucket bucket of water down the driveway and we would gamble on which rivulet would get to the bottom first. Gamblers are degenerates as well. And not going to put up with people Okay, oh, who's the winner? Johnny Boney Joni. All right, pay out. Oh, actually, he's not the winner. He's been disqual. What, what, what? I got to give that money back? <laughs> Rowboat on that, my friend. Giving shit back. So, um, so you know, we've got, you know, they're, they're, they're flags being flown. But what, what concerns me, what concerns me is that you know, if this MMA thing is our drug, what concerns me is the way in which it's being stepped on. Specifically, whatever feelings you had coming out of UFC 216, and, and though we have now completely successfully divorced ourselves from the cares and concerns of the casual fan, you can't tell me it doesn't sting a little bit for the bald one to attack Jason Aldean on a national platform. When the fuck, how did this, how, how did this Trumpian thing happen? You know, I'm hearing a lot of shit thrown around about Snowflake, but <laughs> if, if, if Obama had answered e e even an eighth of his critics via tweet, I, I, I just, this is not, you know what, uh, I, when I was, when I was a street fighter, <laughs> I was like jumping people for, for calling me a name. And, and my Russian friend, Bubby, the judoka, Russian judoka, he was also, you know, street fighter guy. He goes, you know, Eugene, people can say whatever they want to me. They put their hands on me, then it's all over. And I was like, ah, man, you know, that's, that's all right. You know, I mean, I could deal with words. Ah, you black bastard, niggerish. Okay. You know, if I've said to a guy once, I go, if what you're trying to do is to get me to fight you, there are easier ways to do that than demeaning yourself with racial invective because it doesn't hurt my feelings and it doesn't impress me. So you're just wasting time. You could say, hey, you just fuck you, let's fight. And the guy goes, okay, fuck you, let's fight. And then I broke his teeth out. That's the way it goes. But you didn't have to lower the thing with this, this show. Then I, then how, do I, how am I supposed to feel that I beat up somebody that's stupid? that I did your father's job for you. Come on, stop it. So the bald one is now high dudgeon. Or is, he, is it a press ploy? He's giving Jason Aldean a hard time because Jason Aldean went on Saturday Night Live. How many people, millions of people watched Saturday Night Live versus how many people were in the house in Vegas, at Vegas Strong watching UFC 216? Maybe that's the point. Maybe the sixty-five ninety-five paper pay-per-view. Maybe that's the point. Maybe that's the point about relevancy. But if that's really the point, how about not going to a fucking boxing match when you got a fight? How about watching that shit later at home? Have somebody make a beta tape for you. So you're going to attack Jason Aldean for not being in Vegas and playing your event? You know what that sounds like? It's like me attacking Jason Aldean for not having Oxbow open up for him. In other words, you knew he wasn't going to show up. This was not a surprise. If you wanted to get pissed off about this, you got to get pissed off about it last week when you didn't hear back from his people. 
and you sure won't hear back from his people now. And you're too smart to know that. The Baldwin is who I'm speaking about. So why would you do it? It's got to be not because you you expected something effective to happen or come out of it, but because you were, there's another motive. But for those of us, fight degenerates, who came out of 216 feeling not bad, my response to that fucking piece of, 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 of PR disaster is like my, my thing every morning. Like I had, a, I went to, I used to date this woman who was a school teacher and she's calling the parents to let the parents know about some special back to school or some special thing. The kids have been involved in some project and we want you to all come to the school. Kids were 12 years old. She calls this one kid's house. Said, hey, uh, um, is, uh, is so uh, your mother, you, yeah, I'm calling about, uh, I'm calling about uh, Dan. And the mother kind of pauses and goes, What's that little asshole done now? Nice. So anytime somebody says Trump, there's a news plea with Trump. My first thing is, what's that asshole done now? And keep in mind, this is much like the briar patch. I'm not upset. You know, like you've heard me talk about, I don't know, Donna Shalala, let me on my own show. You've heard me talk about the times I've been in riots. I just kind of been walking through the riots. And if you're just kind of walking through the riots, observing, you're generally, you're generally unmolested. I felt like Dante in, with Virgil going through hell. I feel comfortable with that kind of chaos because it's in my head. So when I see it reflected in the outside world, I'm like, ah. It's like a homeless guy when there's a hurricane <laughs> and everybody with homes is now homeless. It's like, oh, you're here. I've been waiting for you. But I still do say, what's that asshole done now? What's the bald one? What is that asshole done now? Jason Aldean, he's rich. I'm talking about the bald one. I'm not. Maybe he's smarter than I am. Maybe this clever shit afoot, and this has got something to do. Maybe this is clever. But I don't know. What can I tell you? Maybe he knows something I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I don't know. So he attacks Jason Aldean. So now I had it took me half a day to kind of get my shit now back to where I was thinking and feeling about the fight. And I have to say. Uh, and it's just it's just us talking. It's me talking to you. It's the degenerates talking to you. Get, halfway through the show, I got news for you. Nobody who is not a complete fight degenerate is listening. <laughs> None of you. So we all we it's like AA or NA or SLA, and that doesn't stand for the Sibianese Liberation Army. It stands for Sex and Love and Not. Oh yeah, love. Yeah, that's why there's guys are there getting furtively delivered blowjobs in, 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 phone, in phone booths. At least that's what happened at the, the meeting I went to, you know, because for an article. There's not a lot of love going on in parking garage sexual assignations. Not a lot of love. <laughs> but they, they didn't want to put essay because then they, everybody would think it was Sorrell Academy. <laughs> I thought this was Sexaholics Anonymous. No, no, it's the Sorrell Academy. <laughs> So, so uh, Kid Nate and I on the Care Don't Care preview, we did our whole thing where we bet some money. And going back through the fight, Ferguson and Lee, we thought was a $10 fight. And it was about a $10 fight. I, I, you know, I have to say, I picked Ferguson to win, and Ferguson won. But I, I hate him more post-winning than I did pre-winning. Why? It's because he's like, I don't know, what was that trope on sitcoms? The out-of-it dad. <laughs> you know, like he's vaguely aware of something going on in McNugget Land, but not really quite sure about what it is that's going on in McNugget Land. But something's going on in McNugget Land. So, like, McNugget makes $135 million boxing, and then on his young man's Twitter feed, he's, he's boxing. Like, somebody's going to say, oh, shit, get me, get me Tony Ferguson against, against 
Hey, you know, uh, GGG. Get the fuck out. It's not going to happen, man. I mean, even the media event of, of him and the Verdum uh, to do, it, it was not manufactured by him. It's like somebody once said, reviewing an Oxbow uh, uh, live experience. Imagine a band that did everything wrong. It's like, imagine a fighter that did everything wrong. And he's like, he's got the belt and he's got this, this manufactured, you know, joy and, and he's doing the little break dancing thing. And he's got, come on, man. You know what it is? You know what I've responded to, what I'm responding to and what I've responded to ever since I was a kid and what still drives me? If I don't like you, if I don't like you, 98% of the time, if I'm disliking somebody, it's because they're a fucking phony. Or like negative approach saying, why be something that you're not? Why be something that you're not? Why be something? Why be something? Why be something that you're not? Now, there's a certain part in your life where you're trying to kind of settle on personality types. You, you try them on like it's like a tasting table. Do I want to be the jock? Maybe I want to be the geek. Or maybe I want to be the, the introspective, sensitive young man. Or, the, or maybe I want to be the, 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 the you know, bathroom lurking, furtively delivering blowjob homosexual. Or maybe I want to, you know... Try on different personalities. Try them on. But by the time you're 25, your personality starts to congeal around something. McNuggets or no McNuggets. I guarantee you, before he had $135 million, what is the first thing? You remember the conversation he had with Chuck Liddell? What is the first thing he said to Chuck Liddell? You're going to see me up there. That's what he said to Chuck Liddell. You, do you know a friend of mine once said, he goes, you know, all the crazy shit you used to say? It's actually coming true. I was standing out in a field, completely unclothed, very much like the Ibiza thing, if you know what I mean, with Conor McGregor and the full-size cutout of Conor McGregor on Conor McGregor's face. I was kind of like that, and I was like, I was there holding forth to the to the to the universe, and I was like, I've got to, my people are awaiting me. I need to get down to to talk. And I, and I, as a captain of industry, you know, I'm guiding this I'm crushing dishes. And I'm, you know, I'm at war with the planets, at war with mankind. You know, I was having a megalomaniacal fit. I don't know, other, there's no other word to describe it. Presidents, presidents vie for connections with me. And they, I went and I told my roommate. And years later, when I'm playing golf with Donna Shalala, who showed up instead of Aunt Bill Clinton, Democratic National Convention in LA, I'm telling my, my, old, my old roommate about it. And he said, all the crazy shit you used to talk about happening is happening. You're hanging out with the president. You know, famous celebrity chicks are calling you on the phone. Fuck. If you dream, you can achieve. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, by which I I say this all to say, McG was saying this shit when he was on welfare. McNuggets. You know? Sincerity is everything. But once you have that fake, now you got it made. But sometimes it is sincere. McG is McG, as he's always been, as he will be. He's am what he am, like Popeye, not the dog, the cartoon character. So now this renewed adolescence that these fighters are going through when they try to figure out, I, I got to get the attention. I got to get the it. Yeah, you got to get it. Got to get it. But you know what? It is something you can't get. <laughs> you got it or you don't. You might be able to fake it. Or, you know, the gyre turns and maybe your thing is the end thing. I never thought, given the personality he has, that, that GSP would get this far as he's got then. Never thought he would. But he's not a bad looking fella. And once you accept, okay, he's French Canadian. Okay, I got it. He's getting roles in movies, not as many as Randy Couture. Who's not a bad actor. He's no Rondo who's not a good actor. So, uh, so you know, Ferguson wins, and he's breakdancing, and he's doing this. Ah, God, bullshit, boy. 
And, uh, you know, the telling thing, if you were listening to the commentary, which is why I listened to it at the wine bar, because of the commentary, the telling thing that you're hearing, the telling thing that you're hearing is, is when Joe Rogan starts to say stuff about Ferguson, like, oh, he always fights like this. He takes a lot of abuse. He, he's a, you think Ferguson left his house that day thinking, I want to take a lot of abuse? I want to fight an exciting fight? Mighty Mouse. Oh, sorry, Mighty fought an exciting fight, okay, didn't take a lot of damage. Nobody's taking damage because they want to look cool. <laughs> Ferguson took the damage because Ferguson is a guy who's fighting, uh, uh, um, who is getting by on technical talent, but hasn't managed to put it together in the mixed part of martial arts. I mean, uh, that Chael Sonnen line that, that they read out was great about how, you know, if you're, if you're hoping for a knockout, you better prepare for a submission. Yours. You know, so, uh, uh, <laughs> so Kevin Lee took the first round. Uh, second round, I, I, thought, I thought it was fairly even. But, you know, Ferguson is like, you can't tell me, you can't tell me that the optics of your fights, are they more exciting? A 13-second knockout over Jose Aldo was, has been on TV more than Leave it to Beaver. You just steal Krasinski, Krasinski, this thing about Duke. We've been on TV more than Duke, like Leave it to Beaver, which I stole from Jim Rome who I stopped listening to ages ago when he refused to review the fight book. Oh, let me get this straight. You know, he didn't think that MMA made sense to cover. And now he covers MMA because why? Well, because he got tired of covering w WNBA. Come on, get the fuck out of here. Driven by numbers and you don't have me in? It's shameful. Anyway, I, it's not about personal vendettas. No, no revenge killings, Robinson. So Ferguson wins. He, he, um, it was, and, but y you know, what happened is, how does it happen? We've talked about this, how you win through losing and lose through winning. Whose stature? I'm going to say in, in, in the drama sweepstakes that Kevin Lee won. He wasn't my pick to win. I don't particularly like him. I think he's an unlikable guy. But I think he is as he is. You know, his response, you know, it, the fact that he had a staph infection, none of his, he said, I'm not going to play it. It's not gonna, there's not going to be an exculpatory, exculpatory, exculpatory play. I fucking lost. That's it. I got to go back. But he came, I mean, he fought a, a gutsy fight, almost did it, got caught. Uh, I mean, the difference is he was not dominated. He got caught. Getting caught is something that happens. That's why we watch the sport. But if you're going to look at that, that, that Q rating, I think that the Lee comes out ahead. You know what, I, what I'm basing this on? I'm basing this on the fact that he, he, when he walked in, he was booed. And when he walked out, he was not. When Ferguson walked in, there was a smattering of, ah, ah my God, I think I'm having a heart attack here. Uh, there was a smattering of uh, applause, and then there was a smattering on the way out. When you win a fight, staying the same, uh, uh, stasis, staying the same is not a win. It's a loss. And I'm not, keep in mind, I'm not hating on Ferguson. I don't know. I picked him. Both Kid Nate and I picked him. But the fight wasn't, you know, I mean, that's not, was an exciting fight. It was a $10 fight. I'm not breaking. Um, we both picked it for $10. And uh, it was bolstered by, bolstered, at, at simultaneously bolstered, bolstered and hurt by Mighty and, and, uh, and Borg. Because it was, and, 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 and what was best about, about um, about the mighty fight because I guess he's no longer mighty mouse. What's best about the 
the mighty fight was his Floyd Mayweathering of Borg. <laughs> I think he said he was going to put him right away in the fourth round. I don't, uh, did he call it the fourth round, the fifth round? I don't care. He, he claimed he was going to put him away at a certain point when he got tired. He's right. Not not when he got tired. When he's like, you know, when I lose interest in messing with this kid, I'm gonna put him away. He takes his back, su su suplexes him. Or like I like to say, suple, which drives wrestlers crazy. He suplexed him. What are you talking to? You mean he suplexed him? Yeah, whatever. Purposely mispronouncing words uh, that, that come from. Uh, <laughs> Like, you know, you hang out with guys who collect stamps. You know, you always pick a word and just massacre it. It drives them crazy. I think people are doing it to fuck with me when they say, you're um, you're umma. What's umma? You're umma. This sport that you follow. I go, oh, you mean MMA? I, I, it doesn't bother me. You get it wrong. I'm obsessed with plates and sausages. You getting it not wrong, right doesn't mean shit to me. So the mighty uh, suplexes him, takes him, and then throws the leg over, arm bars him. And there was a couple of things that I liked. If you took a guy who put his feet on either side of the other arm or across his feet, he, he actually put both of them above the arm, which, was, uh, uh, which serves as a kind of speed bump for a guy who's trying to do a clockwise motion for the hitchhiker to get out of it. I, I'm sorry, I'm doing BJJ. Oops. I'm doing BJJ talk uh, in, inside, the, inside the fence. I don't want to do that. I almost lost the show because I got the keyboard separate, see, and I rolled over on it and things started to happen on the screen, which confused me. But Mighty, I listed as a $10 fight. And now that I'm looking at Mighty against the Ferguson fight, I'm going to have to say that I would increase my take on the Mighty fight to $15 just to let Ferguson and Lee know, whatever, man. You can call out McNuggets all you want. Somebody put it in perspective because I got a little overheated uh, about why my hatred of Ferguson, even though I picked Ferguson. Somebody said, yeah, you know what? This is better. Even the jungle wants this fight because cause Lee gets destroyed by, by, by McNuggets, gets destroyed by him. And I'm not even talking about it. He, 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 the guy said not even talking. He wasn't even making the claim that in the octagon that's going to happen. But the PR run up. Against Lee, it's a more of a who the fuck is this guy type thing. Ferguson needs to get, get himself a plane ticket to Ibiza, get a giant size cut out of his own head, stand up on a table and try to communicate that way to Conor McGee because there's no other way he's getting a hold of the $135 million man. No way. Him fighting Ferguson is about as interesting. I mean, you know, Khabib is somewhere in the conversation. You know, there are a lot of guys b bouncing around in there. But if it's me, I look at the cage. I look at the table and the cutout of my face. I'm going back to Spain later. <laughs> you know, so uh, so mighty, mighty and Borg. That that was a pretty pretty masterful. And it may as as a as a BJJ purple belt. It it it, it warmed the cockles of my heart. To actually see people tune, tuned in a, in a functional in a functional way to grappling, it's like that was mostly a grappling match. Right, people liked it, didn't mind. Uh, Lewis, yeah, there's some talk, some 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 Dallas-like, you know, uh, uh, Zap Ruder like uh, uh, you know, uh, Joe Pesci like, uh, it's a mystery of uh, Travis Davis. It's a, inside of an enigma about how Derek Lewis was okay at weigh in, but canceled the fight. If I see more of that with no explanation, guys who are okay at weigh in, I mean, was it a weight cut? <laughs> I mean, it was tough for him to get to 265. Come on. Come on, no. So I, I'm going to say if we see too much of that, people are actually responding to the touts, by which I mean, if you know you're going to piss dirty, you weigh in and somebody's like, hey, you know, 
I uh, hear, like, if you've ever been in a job that they, they were drug tested, it's not a real drug test. It's a stupidity test because they tell you for four months as you're interviewing that at the end of the interviews, there's going to be a drug test. If your drug usage, if you can't manage to abstain for four months, you got a problem. You don't deserve the job. That's pretty much it. You're a dummy. You realize first interview that this job is drug tested, don't you? Email. It's a drug tested job. Do you understand? It's a drug tested drug. It's a drug. To, wink, wink, wink. I don't get it. No, stop. So maybe, I don't, and I'm not sure about this, but maybe I'm guessing. Alex Jones like. Maybe what this means is they give and say, yeah, you know what? We're going to come back. We're going to drug test you. And cat guy, you drug test me. Yeah. If you're fighting, we're going to drug test you. Ah, uh, I'm not fighting. I don't know what happened. He's injured, he says. Good enough for me. He relinquishes the Verd Verdum spot to, to Walt Harris. Uh, I don't remember who Walt Harris was supposed to fight because I didn't pick Walt Harris to win even against who he was ever supposed to fight on the card. So uh, maybe I could find it here at what, while I talk. And there was some talk, you know, that Walt Harris was able to, uh, uh, you know, he's, he's got a puncher's chance. And it was like, oh, wow, I, 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 think, I think dude's going to actually stand up with him, you know, and, and, and try to, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think I think Verd why why do I always underestimate the intelligence of Fabrizio Verdum? Like he's like I got everything to I got everything to lose here and not much to gain. I'm not fucking around. I'm gonna get knocked out again by some guy who can't hold my jock. Really, this is MMA, mixed martial arts. Do get ready for your uh, get ready for to show me that you can hang with a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt. And then if not, then Hasta la fuego, baby. One minute and five seconds of round one. I mean, the guy who Walt Harris was supposed to fight, I guess, gets paid anyway. Walt Harris gets paid. He doesn't fuck with his standing very much because nobody expected him to do anything anyway. He saved the promotion, got Fabrizio or paycheck. Pa Fabrizio can stand. I mean, he's still Fabrizio. So he's, you know, still in the heavyweight, still thinking about uh, Stipe and. Uh, and, uh, you know, I don't say that if he fights TP again, he, he doesn't get it, you know. I don't know. But in any case, he stays alive, gets his name in the press for something other than calling Tony Ferguson a faggot, which fe feels even weird to say, but I just can't bring myself to say the F word, the N word. I just can't do it. I just can't do it, uh, you know. I, I'll say racial invective or gender sex, invective, but I just can't. I just, we're not kids. And we should use the words that are used that we're complaining about. Um, so, uh, uh, Kalindra Faria and, and Mara Romero Borello didn't care about that fight, but uh, 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 Borello, the uh, the her jujitsu really made me happy. It was super aggressive, uh, and I, I guess she's training with uh, with some folks that are super aggressive. I don't have any. I'm not gonna complain at all. I mean, I didn't care about the fight. I care, I, I care about Barella afterward. She's one of the few. She's like the only Italian woman fighter. So it's got my interest and my attention right away. The, you know what this face is I'm making? This, this face is, I got questions. I got questions. I got USADA-esque questions. About Barella, but I guess they have tests for those things. Moving on, I'm not going to go any more into it because I got like six minutes left here because I spent too long talking. But it doesn't matter because then they didn't have tons of cares on us. I, uh, Benel Dariush, friend of uh, a friend of Ozzy, not a friend of Knuckle Up. He hasn't been on Knuckle Up yet, uh, but I did interview him for a piece for Ozzy, and he. Um, uh, fought, uh, almost put Dunham away in the first round, um, but then was kind of winded from uh, from that. So it, most people give him the second round to Dunham. Uh, um, and uh, it was a, what is it? A, a majority draw. Um, and I'm not sure what that means. I should know what that means. <laughs> 
They're so rare to give out. They raised both their hands. That's what I know. It was 28, 29, 28, uh, Dariush. And then 28, 28, and 28, 28. So majority draw. So that means I would I would guess that the 29, 28 would be a, a draw breaker, but apparently not. And I saw both their hands raised. I'm sure the guys at the sports book are not happy. And I picked him to win. But I only bet five dollars in the fight, so who cares? Um, all of you who are telling me, "Oh, you're really napping, not caring about Tom Duquesnoy," he got beat. So uh, thanks for the intro. Uh, 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 Venata versus Bobby Green. I picked Venata, and uh, uh, it, it was a split draw, which I, I is it was a great fight. It was a it was a great fight. Like Bob, you know, Bobby Green has just kind of been like the who's that cat with who shot himself in the foot? Uh, Joe Diesel Riggs. He's like an African American Joe Diesel Riggs, but uh, um, but this 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 was you know, I think it, did it make it to fight of the night? I don't remember, and I can't see the com. I got to figure out. Somebody's got to help me figure out how I can see the comments when the show is running, even though that would probably just tend to distract me and I would give a shitty show. I can get, read them. If you leave the comments below uh, the YouTube video, maybe I can see them there. Like the, the guy was like, I hate Eugene. What? <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> some from the peanut gallery. Hate from some guy. That guy, I hate you fucking Zionist. You know, the Palestinians that were a bit fucked over. Oh, man. You know what? Like I told you my story about when I was hanging out in Jordan. And it's like, there's not going to, you know what? I'm not talking about re-legislating, you know, historical rights or wrongs. You know, the guys in Cuba, my Cuban friends were like, you can't, you can't drop the embargo until my father dies. Why? Because my father has a list of guys he's going to kill when he gets back to Cuba. You got to, they won't let it go. You won't let it go. Look, look, look the IRA, <laughs> you know, in a Western world, some people decide to make accommodations. And I think, you know, that was a tough road because the IRA got paid essentially for being the IRA, romantic Americans who have a connection to the struggles. And I'm not saying the struggles weren't real, but the Americans who were pouring money into the IRA, it's like, why don't you give your money to the Boy Scouts of America? You know, your emotional connection to what's happening in Ireland, maybe it's not helping Ireland because at a certain point, these guys were, that was their business. Until uh, Jerry Adams got, yeah, well, you know, things have changed now. I'm not going to talk about it because I don't know. And you gotta, inevitably, I'll say the wrong thing. Is, ah, you know, and then I got, you know, your long, angry, breathless comments too long, don't read. So anyway, uh, 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 how did I pick? I see, I didn't, kidney, sometimes we don't match up and I can't see who, and I'm rushing now because I have two minutes. Um, I didn't care about Pearl Gonzalez, uh, even though some of you were very impressed with her bosoms, her breasts, her uh, doctor purchased breasts impressed you. I didn't care about Matt Schmel, Schnell and Marco Beltran, but Beltran was a gig straight up and I knew he was going to lose. Um, and, but I did pick, both of us picked, uh, 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 oh, I guess Lentz, Nick Lentz was scheduled to fight, uh, Walt Harris. And so Lentz got screwed. I'm sure he got paid. And, uh, a gift extraordinaire, John Moraga, we both picked Bibliotov and, and John Moraga shows up, but he shows up because we picked Bibliotov. How, uh, uh, Bibliotov. Had we not have picked him, he would have done what he always does. Showed up half there. Uh, Brad Tavares and Thales Letes, I said I didn't care, but in my heart of hearts, I knew that Letes would dis disappoint me more than Brad Tavares did. I don't have it written down, so I can't prove it. And that's the fight night. One minute shy of, uh, uh, of it. So uh, this week, we got Tuesday. We got, ah, if I did it, and because uh, uh, Alexi is, uh, doesn't explain it right, there are two shows in one hour. 
if I did it, it's now half an hour, solely MMA content. If the shoes fit, non-MMA content. You got tired of you MMA guys complaining about, I don't give a shit about Paul. I don't care about Harvey Weinstein. I don't care. So if you want the MMA stuff, I myself enjoy the tangents because it, it, the vast lattice work of lattice work that is that that is MMA and how it fits into the world and our lives and, and the sausages and the plates. But some people want it. They're very directed. So we do we do the one. And then immediately after, we log out and we log back in if if the shoes fit. That's Tuesday at 7:30. So show up there. Uh, we got um, we got next week. We have off, right? And then after that, October 21st, we got Cerrone versus Still. So this week we'll only do if I did it and if the shoes fit. There will be no care. I don't care preview on Wednesday. So you got to knuckle up this week. You got if I did it. And if you got if the shoes fit, otherwise we're done. Then we're done. And I, I have to say, walking away from it in total, at this remove of what twenty four hours, how do I feel about this drug that I've consumed that I've been consuming since UFC one? Eh. Sorry, I got paint. I've been doing painting. That's the way it goes. It's the way it goes. I mean, if you've been gotten, you think once you're an addict, you think every fucking shot of heroin feels good. Well, it feels better than not. It feels better if I had, than, than if I had nothing. So there you go. There you go. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I mean, I'm chopping at wood, so yeah, I know. And there's the mist. I feel the same, cold, hot, the same. Not much of a difference to me. Anyway, this is knuckle up number two fifty five. Uh, I am your host Eugene S. Robinson with uh, S standing for Savage, and this was about UFC two sixteen and snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. Had, I tell you, I, I would feel completely different about it had the Baldwin kept his mouth shut, but he didn't, leading me to believe that we are sitting in the backseat of a car that no one is driving, unless he's going to do some kind of Princess Bride thing and double back and say, "Look." Look how many people I got who are casual fans who are paying attention now because I attacked Jason Aldean. The fuck are you thinking? You know what? Habits of highly successful people have lots of lots of associates, not even friends. They know a lot of people. How many people do you think Jason Aldean knows? How many people do you think the bald one knows? How many people do you think the bald one knows that like him? Can't fight three three front battles. It's increasingly hard. Anyway, uh, come back on Tuesday. Here is go below. Give me a thumbs up. I uh, want to you know thumbs up. And uh, uh, if you want to join the whole Twitter thing, it's at Eugene S Robinson. That's a Twitter handle. Apparently, uh, I'm it's it's it used to be gated. No longer gated. Uh, uh, Instagram. I'm Mr Sleep Three. That's gated. If you don't have pictures on your thing, are you gonna try to get me that I got you gotta you gotta I gotta request approval from you? Forget it. Most of the stuff there will be music related, however. So if you're not into the music, don't even bother with the Instagram. And, and of course, if you want to see that that picture of me as Hitler, that is still on the Instagram thing, Mr. Sleep3 at the uh, whatever it is, Instagram. So uh 255, uh we'll 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 see you in a couple weeks. Uh, uh, well, I, unless you want to watch If I Did If the Shoes Fit Tuesday. Until then, uh, you know, uh, uh, stay out of trouble. Don't do anything I would do. Look what you made me do! Ah, I tricked you. Ah.